Hello, and welcome to Deploy Intune 101, a free video training course on how to quickly configure and deploy Intune as a standalone enterprise mobility management solution. My name is Roy, and this video is brought to you by UEM Authority. Let's get started. We start this episode here on Microsoft's documentation website looking at Intune licensing requirements. You will see licensing for the Intune service can be found within 10 subscription plans. Microsoft do this to provide licensing flexibility to cater for different customer needs and organization sizes. For example, for those organizations who are looking to adopt a cloud first approach to IT, such as startups, may want to utilize Microsoft 365 Business Premium. Now this license includes Office 365, standard applications and productivity applications collaborative applications such as Teams and SharePoint, Exchange Online, so if the organization is adopting a cloud-first approach, there is no reliant on on-premise services, and of course Intune for their device management needs. However, for those organizations who are either well-established and support a large user base or are still very reliant on on-premise infrastructure and perhaps with a view to adopt some cloud technologies known as hybrid they may want to utilize something like microsoft 365 e5 or e3 as it's more suited to their requirements as a on-premise and a cloud customer enterprise mobility and security is the main focus for this episode, as this covers support for Intune as a standalone service. We can see from Microsoft's pricing options website, enterprise mobility and security satisfies most, if not all information and security criteria an organization may have when assessing Intune as a suitable product choice for their device management needs. Here in the Azure portal, to add a trial license to your tenant, we select Azure Active Directory from the Services Quick Access Carousel. Under Manage, we select Licenses. And then from there, we select All Products. To add a license or a trial license, we select the Try slash Buy plus button or Add button. Here under Enterprise Mobility and Security E5, we expand the free trial option. We can see that this trial includes 250 licenses and is active for up to 90 days. What this means is you are able to assign this license to 250 individual users and you are able to trial the license for up to 90 days. Onwards from the 90 days, Microsoft will charge your billing information unless you choose to cancel. Now, usually we would select the activate button here to enable this trial license. However, as you can see, for the purpose of this training video, I have pre-added the enterprise mobility and security E5 trial already. So for your own Azure tenant, go ahead and press the activate button once that has been completed, you will see a banner saying that the Enterprise Mobility and Security E5 license has been successfully added. However, you may not see it populate here within the portal immediately. You may need to sign out of the Azure portal and then sign back in in order for the user interface to update accordingly. To add a new user to our Azure Active Directory, we go ahead and select our tenant name at the top here. Under Manage, we select Users. We then select New User, Create User rather than Invite User, as we are creating the user directly here in the tenant. 
Under Identity, we will fill out the user details. For this example, I'm giving the username as test user 01. Automatically, as your Active Directory will pick up the tenant name and domain. This being uh, training UEM authority on Microsoft.com. We then give the user a name. and a first name, and then a surname. For the password criteria, we are going to keep auto-generate password selected as we would like for Azure Active Directory to create the password for us. Under groups and roles, uh, we will leave this blank for the time being as we will create a group in a later video. Under settings, block sign in, we do not want to block the user theme from being able to sign in. However, we will give the user a usage location. I am based in the United Kingdom and therefore I will select United Kingdom as the usage location. Now you can provide job information uh, to a new user if you would like. Perhaps I can put something in here. something like this perhaps. And also um, if the user does have a direct line of line of report and the user exists already, uh, you can go ahead and, and assign a manager to that user. So you start building a hierarchy or a global hierarchy for your organization. That will propagate through more specifically in the address book and mail for um, Outlook. So then we go ahead and select create Okay, so we can see that Azure Active Directory has completed creating of the user. We will go into the user and review those settings. So we can see Active Azure Active Directory has given this user a user, user principal name of testuser01 at trainingUEMauthority.onMicrosoft.com. So we can see here the name is testuser01 as we specified. First name is test last name is user01 and then the user principal name or UPN as some of you may be familiar with that acronym is test user01 at training UEM authority dot on Microsoft dot com so the training dot U, uh, training UEM authority dot on Microsoft dot com is my training tenant name so that is the name that I have chosen and that is the a uh, fully qualified domain name that the Azure tenant will give any new account, account that is created. We can see here the user type is member and not guest as specified. And the source of the object is Azure Active Directory. For an organization who may be a hybrid organization, uh, they can synchronize user accounts from their on-premise Active Directory into Azure Active Directory for those user accounts, the source will be Windows AD. We can see here the job information we have given the account. So IT technician under job title, company name is the UEM authority and the department is IT. Block sign in under settings is selected as no and usage location is United Kingdom. We would now like to assign a license to this user. We do this by selecting licenses from the left hand side, select the assignments button. As you'll see here, the enterprise ability and security E5 trial license populates as this is the only license that is available to us within the, within the tenant right now. So we want to go ahead under select licenses. We want to select the enterprise ability and security E5. Now you will see Enterprise Ability and Security E5 as we saw earlier. Uh, 
mentions all of these components within that license subscription and that should be reflected equally within the Azure portal tenant and under the available license options here. So we do have some granularity to select which services or products we want to include within this license capability. For this purpose, we will keep all of the services selected. The most important being is Microsoft Intune, of course. So we want to go ahead and select Save. So you'll see here, license assignment succeeded. We will go ahead and select our test user. Select Refresh, as it may take a few minutes for the user interface to update. Okay, so we can see here now the license has been signed successfully to this user, which is the Enterprise Ability and Security E5. Its state is active. Enabled services, as we saw earlier, have all been selected as yes, and the assignment path is direct. We are now ready to set the MDM authority as Intune. To access the Endpoint Manager console, we need to open a new tab and navigate to endpointmanager.microsoft.com. Under a tenant administration, select tenant status. You will see here for my tenant, that I'm running service release 2103. This means that Microsoft will now automatically assign Microsoft Intune as the chosen MDM authority, unless otherwise specified. However, if your tenant is running a service release, which is pre-1911, you will have to manually set the MDM authority. What you can expect from Endpoint Manager is an orange banner in the top right corner of the screen. The banner will ask you to manually set the MDM authority for your Azure tenant. To do this, select the banner. Azure will then move you through to a different window, something that resembles this. Under the mobile device management authority, we want to select Intune MDM authority. Once you have done that, select Save. Go back to your Endpoint Manager console. Perhaps you might need to refresh the browser window or sign out and sign back in, but eventually this will propagate through. Under Tenant Status, you will see MDM Authority set as Microsoft Intune. 